Hello brothers and sisters and welcome to this video called Passover Black Holes and the Harp. So there are some interesting things which are happening in our world um, right as we come up to Passover and I uh, thought I'd just make a quick video. Um, I'm in Jerusalem at the moment. Uh, the acoustics are a little bit uh, strange in this room so I hope you can hear me loud and clear. And uh, I hope you enjoy. So, uh, opening up with Psalm 49 verses 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. So that's, uh, that, is a, um, that is a definite article, of, uh, is upon the harp. And uh, I'm going to go through that at the end uh, of the video after the black hole uh, information. And then Job 38.17 says, Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? So I think that's a really cool verse um, and pertains to black holes and... Uh, and we'll see as we go through this slide uh, how cool that verse really is. Okay, so the black hole that everyone is talking about. Uh, this black hole took place in Virgo. Um, it is in a very interesting location. So I'm going to go through the astronomy uh, of that uh, black hole uh, after this information. And uh, I think you'll see why it is so interesting. And I'll just say thanks to Val uh, who... Uh, pointed me in the direction of this and also uh, brother James from uh, James Smith um, YouTube channel who I met yesterday he mentioned this as well and I, I was aware of it but after Val mentioned it uh, to me as well sister Val um, I thought I'd take a closer look and things just started jumping out at me so praise the Lord for that Okay, so the black hole, the first image of a black hole, the supermassive one at the center of the galaxy Messier 87, was published by the EHT, which is the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration, on April the 10th, 2019. But what you need to know about this, first and foremost, is the data began, the data collection began on the 4th of April and ended on the 11th of April, 2017, which was Passover. And that's why I've called this video Passover Black Holes because the, the information which was collected by these seven um, radio stations which are, which are located uh, all across the globe was, was taken on Passover. So they have processed this data for, uh, for, for two years, um, petabytes of information, which uh, so much information that they, they can't actually send it over a network. They, they had to transport the disk um, the hard drives with this information to a central location and run it through a supercomputer to actually process the data and and compile these images. So these this is the first visible image of um, of a black hole, as as I'm sure you guys know. Okay, so the Event Horizon Telescope is a large telescope array consisting of a global network of radio telescopes and combining data from several very long baseline interferometry stations around the Earth. And the aim of the EHT project is to observe the immediate environment of supermassive black holes with an angular resolution high enough to resolve structures on the size scale of the black hole's event horizon. And among the project's observational targets are the two black holes with the largest apparent angular size. That's M87 at the center of the supergiant elliptical galaxy Messier 87 and Sagittarius A at the center of our own Milky Way. So... Five open papers have been released with data about this project, and uh, I'm going to go through those very quickly. You can you can have a look at um, these these five papers. There's, there's so much um, scientific data in there, and um, there's there's much better places on YouTube that you can find that will give you the information about this. So uh, regarding the actual black hole itself, uh, I'd uh, recommend doing some research. I'll put some links. In the information of the channel and uh, you can have a look at uh, some of the videos which I thought were, were uh, very informative 
But uh, our uh, concern with this is more related to the Revelation chapter 12 sign, where this is actually located, and uh, the symbolic value of this black hole where it is. And of course, um, none of the astronomy, uh, none of the astronomy sites or uh, YouTube channels are going to deal with this because this is this is related to um, this is related to the Revelation chapter 12 sign, or it certainly could be, which is what we're going to go over. Okay, so why look at a black hole in another galaxy and not our own? So trying to see our galaxy's own black hole is like trying to see the center of a vast forest while standing along its fringe. And there's just too much stuff in the way, including stars, planets, gas, and dust. So, so we can't really see the black hole in our own uh, Milky Way as well as we can see this black hole which is in, uh, which is in this uh, galaxy which resides in Virgo. Uh, and radio telescopes are capable of cutting through a lot of cloudy debris and light that obscures our view. An array of t such telescopes spread across the globe is exactly what the Event Horizon Telescope is, making it possible to glimpse Sagittarius A. So Sagittarius A is where our black hole is in our uh, Milky Way galaxy. So that, that's where, the, that's where the, the, the center of our galaxy is is located is through Sagittarius A. So if we wanted to look at our black hole, we would look through the constellation of Sagittarius, which is interesting because uh, this world obviously belongs to the, you know, the, the, the kingdom of, uh, of Satan and Antichrist and the black hole at the center of our galaxy is, is through Sagittarius A. And Sagittarius A is the white horse rider. Unto him was given a bow and a crown and he has um, a, a, a He's 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 depicted as a beast, so that you've got to look through Sagittarius in order to see our black hole, which is which is pretty interesting. And the Milky Way's black hole is significantly more difficult to capture in images due to how much its signal changes and how rapidly those changes occur. So researchers within the EHT project still have to capture a suitable image of Sagittarius A. So that's our own black hole, but they're not quite there yet. So it's very interesting that this this black hole is the first one to be to be um, to be imaged, and this is in the constellation of Virgo, and this this black hole is is much much bigger than than our than our black hole. So the EHT team did the next best thing. Um, M87 Messier 87 is a supermassive black hole at the center of galaxy Messier 87, which proved to be the perfect first candidate for observation due to its enormous size and consistency. It still took many years of and require the collection of an incredible wealth of data, but we finally have our first ever image of a real black hole. And I'm sure you guys have seen that image. It's a it's a grainy image, but it's nevertheless still an image, and it is profound that we can now see, we can vis visibly see a black hole. Okay, so M87 um, in full, more information on this is also called Virgo A. So Virgo A alpha is interesting, Aleph or NGC 4486, which is a giant elliptical galaxy in the constellation of Virgo, whose nucleus contains a black hole, the first ever to be directly imaged. And M87 is the most powerful known source of radio energy among the thousands of galactic systems constituting the so-called Virgo cluster. So there's a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of uh, clusters in that area, and uh, M87 is, is, the, is the most powerful known source of radio energy. Okay, so M87 lies about 55 million light years from Earth. That's interesting. Five is the number of grace. And the central object is the shadow of a black hole six and a half billion times the mass of the sun. So just, just try and wrap your head around that. That is the God that we serve. The central object is the shadow of a black hole six and a half billion times the mass of the sun and 38 billion kilometers or 24 billion miles across this thing is 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 epic okay and the gravitational field of the black hole is so strong that not even light can escape so that's obviously the natural behavior of the the, the black hole and the ring on one side um, is is brighter because the black hole is is rotating and thus the material on the side of the black hole turning towards earth has its emission boosted by the doppler effect so if you look at the image this it's brighter on one side and the the event horizon is is where you can just see that little that little bit of light, um, which which circ which circles the black hole. And the event horizon of M 
87 is much, much bigger than the event horizon of our own uh, black hole, which is another reason why this, um, why, why they, they focused in on, on this particular uh, black hole was because it has a very, very large event horizon. And trying to see our galaxy's own black hole is like, try, as I mentioned, trying to see the, the center of a vast forest while standing along its fringe. There's just too much stuff in the way. So these are the five papers which they've released. The, this is all the research um, and they kept this undercover for, for two years. There, there wasn't any information that was released until such time as the 10th of April 2019. So, so all of this stuff was released and, uh, and they made a major announcement which was obviously headline news uh, across the astronomy industry and the, um, the, the science and, uh, space and science industry. So if you go into these papers and I will link these papers into the description of the video. Here you can see this is where the uh, locations of the radio telescopes are and these will act as a massive uh, a telescope which is like a global telescope and that's how they that's how they could see this thing and I mean the research just goes on and on and on you can you can you can come and have a look at the the papers and they show you um, exactly how they've done it uh, this is far too technical for, for me but they they broke it down into four different teams and and the, each team had to had to work out the data and they didn't communicate with each other and then and then they all came together and they looked at the results and, uh, and the results were pretty astounding. So in here you'll see that, they, um, that they've got pictures of the, the, the different depictions of the teams that, uh, that actually did these, these tests and uh, it will tell you uh, when it actually happened, uh, when they did it was over a few days <clears throat> over the Passover of 2017. So here it says uh, the EHT's uh, science observing was run schedule for five nights during the ten during the ten night 2017 April 5th to 14 UTC window. Okay, so so the dates were actually um, the dates were April the fourth. Here it says here April. Sorry, the dates were 2017 April the fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth, and eleventh. So the tenth and the the tenth and the eleventh was the was the eve of Passover in 2017, and here you can see these are the observation stations. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them, but there are um, there are seven different radio telescopes in those in those locations, and yeah, all all the information is here. Um, it's it's highly technical, far too technical for me, but but uh, what I can gauge from it, obviously, is that um, you know, is 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 that this is this is a prolific, a a prolific achievement by mankind to to actually visibly depict a a black hole. So I will link this stuff into the video's uh, description, and uh, here you can see this. Here's a comparison between Sagittarius A. That's our own black hole, and that's the black hole. Uh, which is in uh, the M87 um, galaxy, and the, the 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 black hole which is in the Virgo galaxy is is uh, is much much bigger. So um, and and we have a better viewpoint of it. So I'll link all this stuff in, guys, and you can have a look at have a look at this stuff. Um, it's it's over my head, but uh, it's interesting to it's interesting to glance over. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll put that in in the in the video description. And interestingly, they want to call this black hole Powehi, uh, and Powehi, because of uh, where the um, where the the uh, observation one of the observation stations is observatories is is in Hawaii. A linguist from University of Hawaii has proposed the name of the black hole to be Powehi. Uh, translated to the adorned fathomless dark creation or embellished dark source of unending un creation in the Hawaiian language. Okay, so of course this is totally pagan and uh, and nothing to do with the with the true creator, but it is interesting um, when you when you read 
you know, what this chant actually says and what it's referring to and, and what, what God actually says in Job in that, in that verse that we, um, that we just read earlier on. So this is, this is from the Kumulipo chant and I just wanted to go through what it actually says and, and how, how, um, how it's, it's closely associated, right, with, with, with Job. And now who knows darkness? So, so listen to, to what this says. It says, at the time that turned the heat of the earth, at the time when the heavens turned and changed, at the time when the light of the sun was subdued, so it's like the opposite of creation, right? God said, let there be light. This is in, going in the opposite direction, creating darkness, to cause light to break forth. At the time of the night of Makali, which is winter, then began, here we go, the slime which established the earth. The slime, apparently slime established the earth. The source of deepest darkness, of the depth of darkness. The source of night, the depth of night. Of the depth of darkness, of the darkness of the sun in the depth of the night. Night is come. Born is night. So I just thought it was interesting that, that that's what they want to call this thing, right? And, and, and it has to do with creation, but nothing to do with, obviously, the true God of creation. But I thought I'd just add that in there. So, um, you know, the, the, the blasphemy, really, to try and associate that black hole and what's going on there with to total randomness. And, uh, and you know, no, no, no creator, but uh, talking about a creation... Um, that was just controlled by slime, apparently. So anyways, okay, so um, the Revelation chapter 12 association that this could possibly have is obviously we know that uh, the Bible is talking about the great red dragon. So that's, this, that's the next thing that, that we, should, we should see. And I'm not necessarily saying it is uh, it is the great red dragon. This is the great red dragon, but it certainly could qualify, right? So I, I've always believed that there's going to be something that, that is visible, that we can see, that is associated with the great red dragon, because everything else in uh, Revelation chapter 12 has a, has a visible association with it and a, with, a, um, with a metaphoric value. So I've always believed that there is something that, should, that we should visibly see, which is the great red dragon. So, so whether this is it, I don't know, but it certainly could qualify given the, you know, the, um, the, just the sheer scale of this thing. Uh, it's absolutely um, uh, mind-blowing how, how big that thing is. Okay, and this information is taken from um, Frances Rolleston's Matzeroth, and she, she deals with this, uh, where this is located. So this is, this is located in Virgo, and I'm going to show you where, where it's located. And it's very interesting uh, what used to be there as far as the constellations are concerned and uh, the documented evidence that we have uh, and, and the research that Francis Rolleston and um, uh, E.W. Ballinger from A Witness of the Stars have, 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 have documented about Coma Bernices and Virgo. So here she says, this is taken from Francis Rolleston's Matzeroth. Albu Meza, who was an uh, a, a very famous um, Islamic astrologer, uh, and he did loads of documentation on uh, on the stars and the constellations and, and the history. He wrote describing Virgo, and he says that the Persians, the Chaldeans, and the Egyptians all agree as to the figure of a young woman or maiden, Puella, holding an infant. Okay, so we. We know that Virgo has a, a spiker, which is uh, the, the wheat in her, in her left uh, hand, and, and as we know it, is the branch, right? So, so either way, uh, it could be a branch where she's, where she's holding a branch in her right hand, or what, uh, what, what has been described is that she was holding an infant in her right hand. But either way, a branch, Jesus is known as the branch, of course, in the Bible. So God uses, even if they want to try and change it, God obviously sees, foresees them trying to pervert these things to prevent us from, from, from having this information. So it can either be the branch in her right hand where, where, this, um, uh, where this black hole is, is appearing is, is, in, is in the right hand of Virgo. So, so at the moment, 
it's depicted as a branch, but in in history around this area around Coma Bernices, it was depicted as as an infant, and that's what Francis Rolleston details, and so does E. W. Bullinger. So Albumaza says that Virgo was everywhere a woman with an infant in the planisphere of Dendera, which is hundreds of years BC. The woman, as the sign, carries the branch, okay, and below is a woman holding an infant. And Layard gives the figure of an Assyrian goddess who holds an infant in her arms and reads her name Milet or Mylita, which would be she who brings forth. So there, there have obviously been perversions, um, and uh, Satan has tried to to cover cover these things up. But uh, in, interestingly, Francis Rolleston has an in, an interesting comment about how truth will will stand forth, and uh, and people will come to know the truth at at the end. And in her book, she says, Eratosthenes called Virgo Isis. Isis is obviously another perversion with other Egyptian goddesses differently named is often figured as holding the infant deity Horus, he who cometh. From uh, Gaffarelli, it appears that the ancient Arabs figured Virgo as a fruitful branch. And the Christian Arabs placed an infant near Virgo as Coma. So Coma Venesis is an infant um, and not a, a wig or some, some hair as it is, but it's actually an infant. And this is exactly where this this uh, this black hole is um, has been discovered. So now now that we can see this black hole, we know that it's there. We can actually see it, and that's the, obviously the first time ever. And in the sacred books of the Chinese, it was said that the virgin should bring forth a child in the West. And among the Gauls, 100 BC, an altar was found with this, this inscription: "To the virgin who is to bring forth." And the, and the Taurians in Crimea had human sacrifices to a virgin, and that's obviously more perversions of this um, of this area. But this is this is this is this is very interesting that this um, that this black hole has been depicted there and at this particular time. So then I'm going to go through that further. And Krishna in India, Mex Mexitli in Mexico, had no human father, um, and all of these nations had the zodiac where they might find the woman and the branch, but that the woman was a virgin and the infant the seed of the woman, and prophecy only could have told them. Okay, and then uh, later Francis Rolleston goes on to, to say that Albumaza describes Virgo as a sign of two parts and three forms. Apparently the woman and the branch are the two parts. The ears of corn, the third form, he then says there arises in the first deacon as the Persians, Chaldeans and Egyptians the two Hermes and Ascalius teach a young woman whose Persian name translated into Arabic is Andranedefa, okay, a pure and immaculate virgin holding in the hand two ears of corn sitting, sitting on a throne, nourishing an infant in the act of feeding him, who has a Hebrew name by some nations, Iesu, with the, with the signification Ieza, which we in Greek called Christ. Yeza is evidently the Hebrew verb yesha, which is to save. And the first instance of this word to save, yesha, in, uh, in the, in the uh, Torah is in Exodus 2.17. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And of course, uh, if you go and read that in Exodus 2.17, you'll see that um, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh finds out that uh, Moses murdered an Egyptian, uh, Moses runs runs away, and then these um, the 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 daughters of the um, of the prince try to draw water, and the shepherds come and 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 drive the daughters away. The seven daughters, interestingly, seven daughters. But then Moses stood up and helped them, which is actually this Yesha Yesha, and watered their flocks. So I find that's very interesting, right? The two the two uh, the two witnesses uh, if moses is one of, is the other witness then then that's very interesting as a, as the doctrine of first mention yesha and um, and that word in the torah and the same word is used in 2 samuel 22 3 the god of my rock in him will i trust it. he is my shield hallelujah and the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my savior thou savest me 
That's the Yesha, thou savest me. Yesha, salvation from violence. And then um, Francis Rolleston goes on to say, the woman holding an infant below Virgo in the Egyptian planisphere is evidently that first deacon of Virgo spoken of by Albumaza, corresponding with the prophecy of Isaiah, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Not till the end of the fourth century after the accomplishment of that prophecy was it ever imagined that the virgin mother of the promised Messiah, the virgin of prophecy, should also be the mother of any mere human offspring. Then that notion was then treated as heresy arising among Arians and by the great body of the church at once rejected. So, so the church rejected this idea that, um, you know, that, that uh, the, the, the depiction of the woman in the heavens was the, was the, was the virgin birth. Of course, you know, they, 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 they just rejected it. So she's, she then says that that notion was then treated as a heresy uh, and the church at once rejected it when the far greater error of the undue glorification of the Blessed Mary was denounced by the Protestants. That exploded notion was after 10 centuries revived, but error should not com be combated by error. The truth is strong and shall prevail. Amen. Uh, Francis Rolleston hit the nail on the head right there. So we shouldn't reject these things um, and we shouldn't um, bury our heads in the sand as so many people do. Um, they, they run from, from the constellations and they run from the zodiac. So if you've been following this channel, you know that, uh, that we don't do that here. Okay, and here we can see uh, uh, the Vanda matrix. So, so you'll you'll see where the um, where the star is. Okay, and this is the this is the right hand of Virgo, which is the branch. And Vanda matrix is where the infant was. Okay, by by Coma Bernisa. So this is the, the images have obviously changed, but but the stars still retain the names and uh, Ballinger it, it's written here Ballinger in witness to the stars says okay I'll just zoom zoom in on that Ballinger in witness to the stars a Christian publication wrote the star Epsilon in the arm bearing the branch is called Almeridin Al which means who shall come down as in Jared who shall come down okay so this this star in the right hand of Virgo is called Meridin which means who shall come down or who shall have dominion. It is known as Vanda Matrix, a Chaldean word which means the sun or the branch who cometh. So this is where that black hole um, has been depicted and, uh, and the moon is on its way there. It's a pink moon. It's a Passover moon. So this is very, very exciting. Okay, so let's do some astronomy stuff. Uh, here we can see Virgo. And uh, I'm going to type in uh, M87, M87, and there you can see there is M87, which is right on the branch of Virgo, right? And this is also right where Coma Benesis is. That's Coma Benesis. So what they say is that there was there was an infant that was depicted here, and of course um, that has. Uh, uh, that that has changed because uh, they, they they always change things, right? So Satan is a liar, and he wants to obscure these things from us. So uh, here is M87, right in this location here. There's M87, and that is where the black hole has been visibly depicted, the first time ever. And remember, they collected this data in Passover of 2017. So in the Passover, the very Passover of the year of the Revelation chapter 12 sign was when the data was collected for this um, for this black hole, which they've taken two years to process that data. And also um, the release of the discovery um, and the, the final release of the, the, the visible uh, pictures of this um, this black hole was released on the 10th of April, which is right before Passover. So this is incredible. I think that that's, that's incredible that, um, 
but the data was taken on Passover and, uh, and it's taken them two years to process the data and uh, it's, it's released 10 days before uh, Passover of 2019. And what you also have to remember is that the timing of this uh, information being released is right before the moon makes its way here. So uh, if we go to uh, today, you can see on the right hand side here, this is where the moon is. That's the moon over there. So it's very small. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. So that's where the moon is today. And so this is the first time that the moon has actually come up to the, the, the location where this uh, where this M87 black hole is. So the moon hasn't passed this, this discovery or, or the release of this black hole information. The moon hasn't actually passed this area. It's just coming up to this area. And of course, as it comes up to this area is going to be over the Passover. So this is incredible. The, the timing, the release of this, when the, when the information was, was gathered in, in Passover of 2017, when the final images were released to the public right before the Passover of 2019 and as the moon is just about to come into the, the, the Virgin uh, or the Virgo, the, the, the region of Virgo uh, for that Passover. And of course, the, the full moon in, in, uh, in, in April is the Passover. So that's, here's, here we can see where the full moon is. And that's April the 19th. Uh, and then I'll just go to midnight. You can see here is where the, uh, the here is where the um, where the moon will be. So there you can see that's uh, 11 59 59. So so that is right before that is that is the midnight of Passover. So here if this is incredible, guys, that 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 this, this black hole has been discovered right in this very region um, and, and, and not, just, not just discovered because I've known that the black hole is there but it's actually been visibly depicted it's the first visible depiction of a black hole that has ever been released um, to, to mankind and it's the first visible image that we've seen of a black hole that obviously proves that they're there they knew, they, they knew that, they, that, they, they, that they exist but now we can actually see one and, uh, and, and right there on the branch or where the infant was, uh, the dragon stood before the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born. Perhaps that's the red dragon, who knows? Um, but I thought I'd cover that in this video and, uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the harp. Next is the harp. Psalm 49 verses 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. And uh, that, is, uh, that is the harp. Harp is Kinoa. Um, I don't know why it hasn't uh, processed that properly, but that should say Kinoa. And uh, that is the Sea of Galilee, which is the Kinneret. So this, the Sea of Galilee is shaped like a harp. So the Sea of Galilee this year, uh, they are absolutely amazed. It, there's, as you can see here, it says the Sea of Galilee rises in biblical proportions. 11 inches in 24 hours. Uh, the Sea of Galilee, known as the Kinneret in Hebrew, rose 11 inches over the weekend. And, it's, and this, is, this was on April the 3rd. And it's just been rising and rising and rising. And only this year has this happened. There have been record levels of drought um, in, the, um, in the Kinneret. And this very year, 2019, this rainy season, they've, they've gone from record levels of drought to, to record levels of rain. Okay? So, God says, I will open up my dark saying upon the harp. So, the harp, if uh, the Sea of Galilee is the harp, and we can, we can take that as, as a sign of his coming. Of course, Jesus walked on this water, and he, and he calmed the water. And, and so, the, the Sea of Galilee is, is, a, is a profound uh, symbol of Christ. And just this year, it has risen, and this year alone, from a five-year drought. So, it's gone from record levels of drought to record levels of rain and that is the latter rain remember um, in uh, in a few videos back we covered the latter rain and James says that that the Lord uh, is as uh, the husbandman hath patience he waiteth 
for the early rain and the latter rain. So the latter rain is us as, as the, uh, the, the Christians who are at the end and the time of the latter rain is, uh, is obviously springtime and that is around Passover. Okay, so I'll put these links in the Sea of Galilee and even the Dead Sea is filling with, with fresh water, okay? And, and, and that's, that's thanks to, to the March rains. And here we can see in this article here, it even says the no fishing sign has been submerged in the Kinneret rising water. So here you can see a, a no fishing sign has actually been submerged in the water. So pull in those fish while you can because the day of the Lord is coming. The judgment of God is coming. And once the rapture of the church happens, shame. I feel sorry for those people who are left behind, but uh, God has it all in control. Okay, so the Sea of Galilee is the harp. God playing his dark saying, beginning his dark saying upon the harp. Uh, that is a very interesting verse. So let's just read that again. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. And guys, a lot of people in Israel think that this is blessings coming on, uh, on the land of Israel. Uh, with all this uh, perversion which is going on, God said not to bow to, uh, to idols. They are certainly doing that. Uh, this is uh, called the Tel Aviv Gay Games. Okay, so they just had this the second year in a row. Tel Aviv hosted the International Tag Games for the LGBTQ community. This is like, a, this is like an Olympics for homosexuals. So only, entry, uh, only homosexuals may enter into the into these um, sports events and dancing, you know, males dancing with males and, and all these kinds of things. Um, and there, this, there's, there's not a blessing coming on the land of Israel. Okay, so th this is this sign of, of, the, of the Sea of Galilee increasing in water is not a blessing coming upon Israel. This is, this is pointing to something else. This is certainly not a blessing coming to Israel. There are only curses and destruction coming to this land uh, obviously before Jesus Christ returns and and sets everything straight uh, all the perversion and uh, the homosexuality and these kinds of things which are happening in this nation uh, it's uh, Tel Aviv is becoming like the gay capital of the world right after San Francisco and uh, and God is not going to put up with this so uh, we shouldn't uh, think that the Sea of Galilee rising is a blessing coming on Israel. It's something else. It's pointing to something else. And uh, it is certainly not uh, blessings and prosperity for Israel. And perhaps it is pointing to the rapture of the church. A quick video with those two things which uh, I, I found were very interesting about the black hole and the harp and uh, the fact that they're coming Right at the time of Passover, get the Sea of Galilee filling up is, is absolutely incredible. And uh, that black hole arriving, uh, the information and the depiction of it arriving 10 days before Passover and the information having been gathered on Passover of 2017, which is when the Revelation chapter 12 sign was, and the revelation of that image 10 days before Passover, right as the moon is just about to be full in the sign of Virgo, over the period of Passover, and that's the pink moon. So we'll see uh, if it all means something or um, if we need to keep looking. And I love you guys. Uh, I hope that you are happy and you are uh, reading the Word of God and you're watching and you're excited. It's time to get excited. It's time to be ready because He's coming in the clouds and we're going to be with Him. We're going to be with Him forever and forever and forever. And um, it's going to be so amazing. This is, I know I've said it before, this is, this is not fiction. Um, this is not a story or a novel. This is real. This is really, really going to happen. Uh, the, the, uh, the Bible is a book of facts and it is a book of uh, prophecy which will come to pass as, exactly as it says. I don't need to tell you guys this. You know this. But just to say this. And to just reaffirm that God is in control. Everything that he has said is going to come to pass. Nothing can stop what's about to happen. Nothing can stop the rapture of the church. No mockery, no unbelief, no skepticism, um, no scoffing. 
nothing can stop this guys so don't be disheartened when you see people attacking the rapture be excited because that is an indication that we are coming closer and closer and closer to it keep your eyes um, on the lord jesus christ focus on his face don't worry about the storm don't worry about the tempest just look into his face uh, read his word meditate on his love and his kindness he loves you um, he has conquered uh, he's conquered he's conquered it all um, I um, I'm happy to have met my brother James in uh, in Israel and uh, we are here waiting for the Lord and hoping that he's going to come um, and uh, and we shall see and hopefully it happens if it doesn't happen we keep looking brothers and sisters we keep looking and we we, we, we wait for his coming the prophecies are coming to pass nothing can be more clear than than the time that we are living in the the perversion and the total blindness and the the hatred of the gospel the gospel i mean you know people just don't want to know it people don't want to hear it uh, people have got their hearts their hearts hardened to the gospel and um they want to remain in their sin um they think that this life is is what it's all about this this brief um breath of 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 wind right that that our lives are in this in this world like like a flower that 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 dies so i know that many people are undergoing afflictions at the moment they have concerns about their families who are not saved they are worried about kids and grandkids and all these things i say to you trust in the lord always and just trust him and and know that he loves those people who you love more than you can know um, and he's not going to let us down guys jesus is not going to let us down jesus jesus keeps his promises jesus is coming jesus is king jesus is lord jesus is the one who is in control jesus is in the midst of the church jesus is the one who is amongst us jesus hears our thoughts jesus hears our prayers jesus <laughs> He counts our tears. He counts our tears. He knows he can, he's got them in a bottle for us in heaven. Jesus knows our broken hearts. Jesus wants to be with us. Jesus wants to be with us. Imagine that. The king wants to be with us. And so do we want to be with the king. Anybody who doesn't want to be with the king, you know, I, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to be with him um, because he's wonderful. He's glorious. He's majestic. He's, he's, he is... He's all-consuming love, overwhelming peace and joy. And, um, and what a mighty God we serve. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We say, Bo Yeshua. We say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please come. Please come, Lord Jesus. Please come as soon as possible. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.